Hi, this is Liz Parrish from BioViva. BioViva is committed to extending your healthy lifespan. Today, we're here with Dr. Sewell uh, from Integrative Health Systems. Integrative Health Systems is a, an exclusive partner to BioViva. They essentially work with patients and we work with patients data. Dr. Sewell's quite amazing. He's worked in the stem cell realm for decades. He's done immunotherapy with cancer patients, uh, even cancer patients in late stage that haven't had success with chemotherapy and radiation. He's worked on a remote robotic arm for NASA, ensuring that people in the International Space Station have the same access to surgery as we do here on this planet, Earth. And he's also worked with UCLA and Harvard in, in different uh, areas. So we are so happy to have you here, Dr. Sewell. Welcome. Thank you, Liz. Today, we're going to talk about epigenetics and DNA methylation. Dr. Sewell, can you tell us what epigenetics are? Yes. So epigenetics are environmental influences uh, on your genetic uh, makeup. You know, so, so we are, everybody knows what the, our genes are, our DNA, and that they, and you inherit those from your parents and, and they, and your genes are your genes slash DNA are what's responsible for building your body and making you look like you look and, and, and in effect, uh, determine how long you live as a, as a template. Epigenetics are effects uh, outside your body uh, that, that, and then sometimes things that happen to your body uh, that have an effect on the DNA that change the expression of the DNA. So uh, for instance, um, exposure to toxins can cause changes in your DNA that can turn genes off, uh, or it can result in some genes being turned on, which can affect what, what, uh, how, if you have an illness or not, and it certainly affects how long you live or the, how healthy you live or how unhealthy you live for the duration of your life. So in summary, epigenetics are environmental things that affect our genes and that in, in a way that, that our lifespan is altered, usually shortened. Okay. So, so they're the same genes in every cell, different cells have different epigenetics to do different processes for your body. But over time uh, with illnesses, stress, famine, there are changes in the DNA. We're launching a kit that's called the timekeeper and it looks at DNA methylation. So methyl groups that attach to certain genes and turn them off. And these methyl groups grow over time. And one, one reason we're excited about this kit is you can reverse the effects of methylation. So when you do your DNA methylation kit, it's not something you wanna do once. You wanna do it and then you wanna intervene and then you wanna see what were the benefits or the losses to that intervention. So uh, at BioViva, we want to look and see what happens with patients with regenerative medicine before and after therapy. But you can also affect it by your diet and your lifestyle. Dr. Sewell, can you tell us a little bit of the distinctions between the differences between looking at telomere length as, as associated with your age and looking at the methylation clock? Sure. Um, so in, in our, in our uh, endeavor to to address aging, we had to define aging and we had to measure aging in a uniform way. And so uh, we initially uh, looked to telomere length and, and as, a, as a determination of how old a person is. Um, it, it, and what we discovered was the telomeres are associated with aging in a way. It's the, it's the, uh, it's the rate at which a telomere shortens that corresponds to how long a person lives. If it shortens more rapidly compared to somebody else, that's a shorter lifespan compared to that, that somebody else. If it, if it shortens slower, then that's a longer lifespan compared to what you're comparing it to. Um, so in an indirect way, the telomere length plays a role uh, as a determining factor, but it, it, it's really the rate of decay of the telomere length. 
Now, uh, and that's influenced by telomerase, which is one of our therapies. We, we restore telomere length with telomerase uh, because that's what telomerase does. And that makes cells live longer, okay? So that's one technique we use to address aging. In contrast, methylation of DNA, which results in an inactivation of, of a gene or an allele or something on the DNA, uh, that occurs as a person moves forward through time. So as you get older, more uh, in, there's, a, there's an increased incidence of methylation or methyl groups attaching to certain parts of your DNA and therefore affecting them in a negative way, an epigenetic effect. Uh, and that corresponds almost linearly to aging. So uh, while telomeres are indirectly related to aging, it turns out DNA methylation is directly or linearly related to aging. So we now understand that meth measuring DNA methylation is a very accurate way across the board to compare a biological age and predict the biological survival of someone. So when we look at someone's biological age with the DNA methylation clock, we have a more accurate assessment of their risk of mortality. And we also have the ability to intervene. It's something that we want to look at multiple times. What exactly is an epigenetic clock? An epigenetic clock is a, is a term that we use to describe uh, the gathering of information Using a, uh, using a test called a DNA methylation test uh, that gives us a numerical value that corresponds to, uh, a, a, in an in a inverse way, a person's remaining life, or, and thus how far they have lived and how long they have left to live. So an epigenetic clock uses DNA methylation measurement technology to tell you how, what your true biological age is and what your true expected lifespan is. Why would you suggest that someone has their clocks checked? Well, uh, because normally it wouldn't matter uh, if, you, if you don't have a way to influence how long a person lives. But because we are in the age of gene therapy, where we can, for instance, lengthen a person's telomeres and make them live longer, uh, the effect is they live longer, uh, we can also affect DNA methylation. And, uh, and that's in, we're in the very early stages of that, but we can influence how long a person lives. Uh, and so, and because things affect your methylation rate in your, uh, of your DNA from your environment, you can unknowingly have been accelerated, have accelerated aging because of exposure to a pesticide or radiation or something. And so you might want to address it with a therapy if available. And we see that coming down the road. So let me give you an example. Let's say, Liz, that you, uh, we measure your, your, your methylation rate and we say you're 48 years old. And, um, and then the next 12 months you, you get, let's say you get coronavirus and you end up on a ventilator and you're in the hospital and you have prolonged convalescence and prolonged recovery and you're in the bed for six weeks and you lose 20 pounds and it takes you eight months to get back to where you can just walk around the block. And then you, and so you've lost weight, you've lost muscle mass. It's been a horrible strain on your, your phys, human physiology for nine or 10 months. That's going to have a negative, an epigenetic effect. It's going to have an epigenetic effect on, and shorten your lifespan. That's an example of how the illness can do that. And so, whereas you were 48 biologically and you expected to live to exactly 100, now you'd be 48 in nine months and your, your lifespan has been shortened to 90 when we look. So, and we can, and so if we had a method by which to address the deficits that you incurred, then we could apply that to you. We could say, oh wait, you've lost 10 years of expected lifespan. Uh, we need to, if we can address this by doing X, Y, Z and add those 10 years back. So that's why you'd want to check it because 
you don't know the exact effects. I mean, I'm making up 10 years, but it might be 20 years or it might be one month uh, from the effect of that epigenetic phenomenon. And from what I understand, there are some basic things that people can do to uh, have a better DNA methylation reading. Uh, that is exercise and uh, reducing stress in their life and uh, better nutrition. What was interesting was when we did the literature review on this, we even saw that if you were pregnant during time of famine, you might pass down the epigenetic effects, the, the methylation points to your offspring. That's correct. Uh, it turns out that epigenetics are not just during your time from, from the, your date of birth to the day you die. You, you inherit some epigenetic, uh, uh, epigenetic uh, uh, potential from your parents. So if you're in, in utero from your mother, certainly. But even from, uh, from the ova and sperm in your mother and father before they're ever combined to make you as an egg, they, their effects, uh, their epigenetic deficits or effects alter their DNA, and that's the DNA you inherit. So you get some once removed or secondary epigenetic phenomena that also come into play on how you, your life will, will go once you're born. One of the things that we're doing with the timekeeper that's different than other tests is we're doing the epic array. So we have thousands of points, uh, many of them that are still unknown, but it will give clients the opportunity over the years to be contacted by, by Oviva with updated information as more is known about those points. And of course, we're hoping to find novel biomarkers in the regenerative medicine area. So we're really excited about that. We suggest that you get involved and uh, take your test and then see how you or we can help you affect it over time. Is there what I think that we I want to do, dive a little bit deeper because as when we did the literature review, we see that cells live longer with longer telomeres. And we're hoping to see epigenetic effects in cells change with telomere uh, expression. But can you sort of break down what it means to live longer through telomere expression and live longer through a perfect epigenetic uh, set of genes? Sure. Yeah. So, so uh, imagine um, with regard to, well, let's say with telomere, telomere, uh, we want to alter your telomeres and we say, we're going to, we're going to uh, address your aging with telomerase, which will lengthen your telomeres. What that does is it, it extends the time you're, you're alive. It lengthens your life. So normally, uh, it, let's say a person lives 100 years, and 50 years is halfway through. So uh, that's the, the 50 percentile or, or the halfway mark. And you picture a person 50 years old uh, and what they look like. Now, if you give somebody telomerase and you uh, lengthen their telomeres, and so they now are going to live to 200 years, then their halfway mark is 100 years. So they should look like what the 50 year old looked like in your mind. That's what the 100 year old would look like at 100 years because that's halfway through their life. So, you know, that's what the telomerase therapy and telomere lengthening. Uh, has the potential to do. Now, I'm making up the numbers, but it moves the midway mark, basically. Um, so what you imagine is halfway, how you are halfway through your life, whatever that number is, be it 50 years or 100 years, that's where you'll be, the promise of telomerase. Uh, with the, um, if we, with the DNA methylation, uh, that really has to do with cell survival uh, and cell death. So we can immortalize cells with telomerase, but and that's independent of what we call senescent cells, which is another term I have to introduce to, to talk about this. Um, but the, the DNA methylation uh, is the endpoint where things are, have gone awry and senescent cells are abundant and, and that's when death occurs. So if we can combine the two, we can make a younger cell that lives longer. 
is the idea. It's a combination of the two. It's not just living longer, but it's uh, actually a younger cell too. Right. So of all the gene therapies that we're looking at uh, right now, which is PGC1-alpha, uh, telomer, telomerase, the uh, clotho and the myostatin inhibitor folostatin, uh, we hope to see some movement in the epigenetic uh, clock for sure. Do you think that certain ones of those gene therapies will be more promising than others? I, I do. The, uh, the, the, the epigenetic, the negative epigenetic phenomenon is, is, is a result of the methylation. It's a term we call oxidative stress or oxidation. Uh, it's charged particles attaching to or in mo forming molecules and attaching to your DNA uh, or other aspects of your biology, which, which are negatively influence your biology and, and, and cause you to live, not live as long as you would have if this wouldn't happen. It turns out that, uh, like for instance, PGC1-alpha, it's mitochondrial, its major role, one of its major roles is mitochondrial health. And the mitochondria, and we talked a little bit about this before, mitochondria are your energy production factories in your body. When they crank up more energy to make more energy, they also make a lot of oxygen free radicals, which are, which result in, which is an oxidative stress source. If you give somebody PG1 alpha to crank up their mitochondria, make them make more energy, it also introduces a mechanism to address the free radical generation. So you get energy production without the excess oxidative stress in the presence of PGC1-alpha. If you don't have PGC1-alpha, you get both energy production and oxidative stress, which is negative, which ages your cells. So to, to properly crank up, to properly crank your mitochondria up to make more energy, to make you more youthful, you have to address the free radical formation and that's why the PGC1 alpha is so important. So you end up with a more robust energy, energy full cell that is not having negative methylation effects or aging effects. Wow, that that <laughs> everybody loves PGC1 alpha. Do you think that clotho could have any effect on the epigenetic clock? Just you know, it, by by its mechanism of action. I, I think it uh, my my. My suspicion is yes. Uh, I don't know enough, and when I say I, I mean science doesn't know enough to clearly define as much as I could talk about PGC1 alpha. But Clotho is a miraculous uh, product that I am confident, but I can't tell you the mechanism by which it will have similar effects as the PGC1 alpha in terms of aging and anti aging, actually. And then we see, so when we see a benefit in patients who take uh, a myostatin inhibitor of the full statin gene therapy in their blood glucose levels, is that an epigenetic effect or is that just a systemic effect? That actually is addressing an epigenetic effect. It's, it's treatment. It's treating an epigenetic phenomenon, which the epigenetic phenomenon is aging and poor glucose control as the years go by uh, and uh, approaching diabetes, if you can get the, the glucose, average glucose level down, uh, then you have, be you have better control, then you have prevented the shortening of their lifespan as opposed to if you wouldn't have done that. And so uh, the, the side effect from the follistatin, the positive side effect from the follistatin of better controlling the hemoglobin A1C, the average glucose level, is actually, we could characterize that and, and, and try out call it, it's a treatment for an, ep, an epigenetic phenomenon. And epigenetic phenomenons are, are not good. As a rule, they're bad. They, they, they shorten your lifespan. So if you treat an epigenetic phenomenon, you're treating something bad, which means you're doing something good. Oh, that's fantastic. So we would like to see in the future uh, the perfect human that regenerates faster than they degenerate. That's the goal of the company, to create a body that stays in homeostasis. And we're a ways from it, but 
we are closer to it than ever with the partnership with integrative health systems. We're the first company in the world to be looking at patients with this kind of data. We're also opening up to platform other technologies uh, through integrative health systems and help other companies find their biological endpoints of their drugs, drugs that are uh, ready for human uh, studies and are really promising and that might help patients in the greatest need. I want to thank you so much today, Dr. Sewell, for being here and talking about the epigenetic clock, PGC1-alpha, clotho, telomerase induction, and folostatin, all of our favorites. And we'll be talking about more genes in the next couple of years uh, that we're interested in that may significantly help the human population. Uh, thank you again for being here today, and I look forward to our next talk.